reasons we group rocks into facies is to help with the descriptions. When you actually look at rocks in a natural environment, there are a lot of very small variations in details and the textures that you can see. By defining facies, we're highlighting in our notebooks or to people who are reading our work, the points that we think are most important for the question that we're asking. So we are highlighting the most important points our op most important observations from the rocks and using those to group the rocks together. So there are a number of different ways that you can define facies, um, one of which would be something like grain size. So coarse grained rocks require higher flow speeds than fine grained rocks. So one example of the facies of two facies that might be, for example, found in a river environment would be coarse sandstone deposited at the deepest, fastest flow, and fine sandstone deposited on a point bar where the flow is generally slower. Sedimentary facies can also be defined based on sedimentary structures. So, for example, faster flows you often have dunes migrating, and dunes can create planar cross stratification or trough cross stratification. Uh, whereas slower flows tend to produce, uh, for example, ripple cross lamination. So another way we could define facies deposited in a river channel might be by sedimentary structure. So one facies would could be trough cross stratified sandstone, and a second facies could be, for example, ripple cross laminated sandstone. Of course, in the example of a river channel, um, we have typically have trough cross stratification the same sandstones that are coarse grained and ripple cross lamination in the finer grain sandstones. So we can combine those two features and make a facies that includes both the grain size and the sedimentary structures. So for example, cross stratified coarse sandstone and ripple cross laminated fine sandstone. The detail involved in facies uh, is also related to the question that you're asking. Um, the turbidite facies in detail have been defined by Bauma and the first massive to coarser part is um, often called um, the A part of the turbidite, the planar laminated part is called B, and so on, and they're given different names. So one way to define a facies is on each one of those characteristics within one turbidite sequence. Alternatively, you can define facies on much thicker sequences of rocks. So for example, if you're looking at a turbidite sequence, um, if it's um, proximal or close to the source of the landslides, you will have much more uh, erosion and the bottom parts of the turbidite sequences, for example, the Bauma sequences A and B. So you might define a facies as interbedded sandstones and shales dominated by turbidites with face, Balmus facies, subfacies A and B. In a distal part, where only the tail end of the turbidites reach, might have very thin sands that are mostly the upper part, maybe some ripple cross laminated sandstones and some siltstones with lots of shale. So a second facies in that context could be shale um, with thin inner beds of sandstone representing Balmus sequences for example, C and D. So depending on the purpose of the study you're doing, you might define a facies as each individual part of a turbidite flow, or you might define them as a whole um, sequence of beds that occur in different parts of a turbidite fan. And so that gives you a basic idea of facies, and thanks for watching.